So this is part two of breaking down MTHFR gene and some of the key facts that you want to look at. In this one, we're going to look more into managing your MTHFR gene alteration between things like lab tests, symptoms, and your actual genetic alterations. We'll also look at some alternative things you can take when you're having problems with methylfolate, as well as some of the classic things that happen when you start taking methylfolate. So hopefully you enjoy this and it helps you in your health journey. If you are getting benefit from these videos, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe to continue getting videos like this. Also, as always, I'd like to mention that this video isn't made for any specific individual, so please read the disclaimer before we get into more of these details. The more severe alterations are not as common, and these are the people that definitely need to be more diligent with doing something and trying to support the lack of methylfolate that their bodies are producing. Which brings us to how do you know if you really need to do something or not? Well, it's a combination of things that make that determination. One is the level of severity of the MTHFR enzyme. So if you have a homozygous SNPs for either spot, the C677T or 1298C, that is going to suggest that you probably do want to support in some way. And then you also are going to look at your symptoms and also look at your lab metrics to ultimately make that determination. So what do you do if you have an MTHFR gene alteration and you want to know if you should treat it or how much methylfolate you should be taking? Well, the first thing I always do with all my patients is track their signs and their laboratory results and also look at their symptoms and whether or not those need to be tracked as you're introducing treatment for that person. Remember the whole reason to even look at the MTHFR and supporting the overall methylation process is to optimize how you're feeling and optimize how your body is managing its overall functionality. There is such a thing as over-optimizing too. You know, I'm getting too fancy and doing too many things can sometimes make things worse than make things better, not to mention fact that you have to manage all those things. So some lab testing can be very helpful in making some black and white answers on whether or not you are optimized or under optimized, but the lab metrics aren't an absolute determination, just like the genetics aren't and just like how you feel aren't. So you kind of have to bring all three of them together, but some of the objective measurements that we use to balance out the subjective is the homocysteine test as well as the MCV blood test and vitamin B12 levels. These are the labs that you can do. There are other labs you can do as well to help you understand how your body is dealing with your current amount of methylfolate, but they're usually not necessary. The homocysteine and MCV are usually enough to help give us some clues. And I say clues because there we also have to remember that folate is not the only thing that affects these lab metrics. Sometimes all of the lab metrics will look abnormal and suggest you need more methylfolate. Other times one will look abnormal, the other one looks normal, and sometimes none of them will look abnormal. They all look normal, even though you have a major genetic alteration. So that's why I say you have to kind of look at all three, your symptoms, the labs, and the genetic alterations, and come to an understanding of what the best options are. So each person's body is a little bit different, and it's definitely not a one-size-fits-all approach. As far as actually taking the methylfolate, there are very simple paths and not-so-simple paths. You'll know after you start taking the methylfolate which path you're going to be on. So if you have some kind of negative reaction, like a headache or some other problem, you'll know that the path that you're on is going to be a bit more complex and require more management and care. If you take the methylfolate and you feel generally better or nothing, this is going to be your more simple path. If you do have some kind of negative reaction to the methylfolate, you probably need to get some kind of guidance in terms of what to do and how to manage it from a professional that understands and treats these genetic alterations. There are too many variables to go into here, but an alternative simple option that some people try and successfully implement is just taking some SAMI directly. Yes, this is a supplement you can just take and this can work for some people, but some do still have reactions to this as well. So I'll put a link in the description to one that I use and trust. It's also important to note that even if you do take it and don't have any negative problem from it, doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for you to take and you're not having some problem from too much as well. So that's why the objective measurements that I mentioned can be helpful in 
guiding this process. So remember that MTHFR and methylation is one pathway that intersects with many others and that there's molecules and signals going on in these pathways that we have to be cognizant of. You should work with a doctor or healthcare professional that can help you understand and clarify what's going on in your body so you have less struggles with this genetic problem. When you do introduce new things in your body, it's important to go low, go slow, but make sure you take it to its full potential. I do have some other videos discussing MCB and homocysteine and some of the lab parameters around this. And I also have this book where I go into more details on some of these topics and also a course on MTHFR that includes the book. And I'll put a link in the description for both of those things. If anyone is interested, you can check those out. And we talk quite a bit about the role of MTHFR in genetics and how it might help you in your energy, mood, and some things to watch out for if you're trying methylfolate for the first time. There are lots of things that can affect your health in various ways. And the trick to getting the most out of what your body has to offer and optimize your health is to be mindful of the signals that your body is telling you from day to day. As you introduce new things like folate or SAMe and try new ways to optimize your health, be mindful of what your body is telling you, those signals that it's giving you. The symptoms are the clues, whether you get improvement or problems from a change that you make, it's still a clue from your body. You have to be clear though, to differentiate the signal from the noise though. If you have a lot of symptoms or problems or signals coming in that your body is trying to tell you, it helps to put them into a category and allows you to systematize what's going on in your body. If you have them written down, it will help you differentiate the signal from the noise in terms of what happens when you start things, introduce new things, whether it's diet or supplements, etc. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you do have questions about anything in the video, please drop them in the comment section and I'm happy to try and answer your questions. If you want a more customized, detailed answer from me, consider joining the membership program. I'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your question. Thanks again for watching. We will see you next time.